I, I bet you'll get a shirt just like that. What? Yes. And even me. Oh, man. Seriously, seriously. That good, Ross?
terrified. She's terrified. I'm not talking about. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Wow, that's high. <laughs> hey, hey, give Chase to sing it. Lord, I lift your name on high. Let's try this one. I guess you can call that Dayton. You all probably would. Um, but I, I remember, um, I remember the week. Like it just happened a month ago or so. Um, it was we were, we were winding down. Y'all know that last round of tests before finals. Y'all just got done with those probably about a month ago. Good morning, beautiful. How's your night? <laughs> You are my son. Woke up this morning. See your sweet face. It's a good That's all I have. To do.
And if you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to turn with me to Colossians, the second chapter. Answer to the question, who is this God? Here's a simple way to think about it, and you can remember it now because of this movie. Christ is the one. Jesus is the one. Four answers on the test. John the Baptist, Elijah, another prophet, and the one, the Christ. And Peter circled D. And he had no idea what he just said. And what happens after that is Jesus then goes to write the essay and define what it means for him to be the one. See, Peter thought for him to be the one meant everything was going to be right. It meant that right then the Romans were going to get kicked out and he was going to have a place of prominence and power. He wasn't going to be a fisherman anymore. By the way, that would make it easy for him to leave his nets and go with Jesus if he thought he wasn't going to have to go back to fishing to take care of himself. He was going to be a king. He was going to be the sidekick of a king because everything was going to be put right. And Jesus says, I want you to know you got the answer right. You bubbled in the right answer, but you have no idea what you just said because what it means to be the Christ is you will suffer. You will face rejection. You will have to stand places and be the only one standing up for Jesus. And there are going to be parts of your life that will have to die. Now, the reason why I am all the more impassioned about telling this to you is because something happened here uh, at LCU this past year that woke me up that the church isn't always doing its job when we were taking people's confession before baptism. A girl that sat in the front row of my Jesus and the Gospels class got A's in everything she did. A great servant of God. She loves God. She's a wonderful girl. She had better understanding and better answers of questions than almost anybody in the class. But what happened at LCU this year is there was a guy that killed himself. He hung himself in his room. And what happens when something like that happens on our university is that one of the cool things about being in a Christian university is you can stop what you're doing and you can have a conversation about real life and day-to-day -day stuff. And we did. And I tried to talk with my class about not, not being so quick to rush to judgment about that situation and, and to understand the full picture of what's going on. And we walked through some of the things and and we got down to the end of the class, and everybody left. Except for this one girl sitting on the front row, and I could see tears in her eyes, and I sat down, and I said, Leah, that's her name. Leah, what's going on? She said, Dean, he was a Christian. I said, yeah. She said, how can someone who was a Christian lose all of their hope? I said, Leah, haven't you ever, I said, I'm not at all saying what he did is the right thing. What? I said, haven't you ever gotten to a place in your life 
by what you were going through hurt so much that you just didn't want to deal with it one more day? Haven't you ever hurt that bad before? And she looked at me and she said, no. Now that's okay. But what she said next, I will never forget. She said, in my church growing up, the preacher and everybody taught me that if you became a Christian, bad stuff wouldn't happen to you. I said, Leah, I'm sure your preacher is a great man and I'm sure he loves God, but he lied to you. Because the Jesus that I worship told me, in this world, you will have trouble. The world hated me, it's going to hate you too. Do you know what that means? See, I used to read that passage. <laughs> this is crazy how the devil works, you know. I used to read that passage and say, you know, Paul, I think elsewhere. And hold them as long as you can. <laughs> up, pup, pup is up. <laughs>
Breakfast of Champions. <laughs> Good morning! Good morning! All right. Who thinks that they know the Thorts? Because if the resurrection isn't true, 
Christianity is fake, and I'm going somewhere else. You have to see the facts. You don't have to write a dissertation. You may begin. <laughs> Go. Hi, I'm Brittany. You can't talk. <laughs> All right. 
many times a year do you are you a participant in this? Have you ever done this? I can see that. About how long? I mean, how long do you? Where, where do you see this happen? Yeah, you can talk. Where do you see this happening? We know you're a bull rider, right? Where do you do this? Or where do you see this? At a rodeo. At a rodeo. About how many people are there to watch this thing happen? Tell me, tell me some of the, why do you wear a glove? <laughs> so you don't burn your hand. <laughs> oh, you have to pull it on a rope. And what's, what's this all about? You may begin. Go. <laughs> if you need to scream, it's okay.
Let me see what you got here, Alfie. I believe these are figs. This is the way everybody wants to go to bed on tonight, right? A stomach full of cold milk and a mixture that's better for you. Some kind of caffeine in the mornings would be very helpful. Hot of coffee or iced tea or... I think we're talking about the salt. It doesn't matter. I don't know if I want to do this. This is like, you know... No, I don't. Steve, is that your dad? Hello. Very excited to be here at Kate. It's 
it's gonna really be hard for everybody to get here. But he's taught me a lot what to do, and Tom has too. And all that y'all have. Thanks for being there for me. I've been told that I need to follow God, and I never really have. This week I've heard so much that's changed my outlook on everything. because I got baptized two or three years ago. I did it for the wrong reasons. Andy, you got some talking to do, okay? You got some praying to do. You too, Steve, okay? You guys do some praying right here. Okay? Dave? I'm Christina McFarlane, and I've been a Christian for two years. And for the past year, I haven't been the best Christian I could have ever been. I've done some really bad things, and I'm paying for it right now. And I feel like God doesn't anymore and I feel like I can't, I can't face anybody because of what I did and then I, uh, a year ago my sisters and I got diagnosed with tuberculosis and me and my sisters have been fighting that and I just, I'm, I'm trying really hard because my sister uh, made me in the hospital for the past week and I am up here and I'm really scared. <laughs> guilt that you feel Satan is using to turn your heart away from God. Um, Jesus asked Peter, I'm going to ask you, do you say that I am? Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the Lord? Paul says, if you believe in your heart that Jesus was raised from the dead, and you say with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord, you can be saved. So would you own that? Would you say that? Your mouth, would you say, I want Jesus to be my Lord? I want Jesus to be my Lord. Praise Amen. God. Amen. But uh, what I, I really wanted to say this, and Dean has been the greatest person I've ever met in my entire life. And I mean that with all my heart. And Dave and David have been right there up there with him. Something like that. But <laughs> the reason I've never been baptized is because I'm, I was always scared. I, I'm a coward. Just like these people. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when I was uh, four years old, my mom passed away. And uh, that's when I got scared. And uh, I didn't, I wasn't gonna come up here. My sister begged me for weeks and weeks to come up here and I was like, no, I'm not gonna do it. I just don't feel comfortable doing it. I think it was uh, Thursday or Friday before we left, I decided to do it. And uh, now since I met that person sitting back there, I've dedicated my life to Jesus. Thank you.
built that this afternoon. <laughs> Okay. Smile at the camera, Dodge. And this is Marcy. Hey, Dodge. They were late hey. last night. Travis, good to meet you. Travis. down in the pack to second place. So team one, we will reward you with the late night. You will be spending that late night with team number three. Annie Ock. I just wanted to be a movie star. Right behind us. I thought we were going to watch the video. Is that who? It's Annie Ock. Is it? Yeah. Stop.